Assalamu alaikum dear student this is Gulam Farooq for so front of you now I am going to discuss uh, lecture on Pilgrim's Progress a novel by John Bunyan Do you, uh, I hope you know that this is allegory and okay there the Pilgrim's Progress it is an allegory written by John Bunyan the Pilgrim's Progress religious allegory by the English writer John Bunyan, published in two parts in 1678, means first part was published in 1678 and second in 1684. The work is a symbolic vision of the good man's pilgrim, pilgrimage through life, at one time second only to the Bible in pop, uh, popularity, the pilgrim's progress is the most famous Christian allegory still in print. After this it is known as very famous allegory. It was first published in the region of Charles II and was largely written in while its Puritan author was imprisoned for offenses against the Conventical Act of 1593 which prohibited the conducting of religious services outside the Bailiwick of the Church of England. Means it, uh, it was written in uh, two parts, first was written in 1678 uh, and second in 1684 and it was published. It was the most uh, famous work at that time. Up to this it is in print and uh, it is uh, read. This is the uh, cover page of Pilgrim's Progress. And, uh, part 2, the summary. Part 1, summary. And this is the summary of part 1. Part 1 was published in 1678. It's presented as the author's dream of trials and adventures of Christian and every man figure. As he travels from his home, the city of destruction, to the celestial city, Christians seek to rid himself of a terrible burden, the weight of his sins, that he feels after reading a book, ostensibly the Bible, when evangelist points him towards a wicked cat and he heads of leaving his family behind. He falls into the slough of despond dragged down by his burden but is saved by a man named Hal. Christian next meets Mr. Worldly Wiseman who pursues him to disregard evangelist advice and intended to the village of morality and seek out Mr. Legality, uh, legality or his son civility. However, Christian burden becomes heavier and he stops evangelist, reappears and sets him back on the path to the wicked, wicked gat. The gatekeeper goodwill lets him through and directs him to the house of the interpreter where he receives instruction on Christian grace. As Christian continues his journey, he comes upon a cross and sep sepulchre and at that point his burden falls from his shoulder, three shining ones appear and give him sealed scroll that he must present when he reads the celestial get. This is man carrying burden on his shoulders. Christian continues on his way and when he reads the hill hill difficulty. He cho chooses the straight and narrow path. Pathway up he falls asleep and an arbor allowing the scroll to fall from his hands. When he wakes he proceeds to the top of hill only to find he must return to the arbor to find his lost scroll. He later uh, arrives at the palace beautiful where he meets the damsels uh, discretion prudence, piety, and charity. They give uh, Christian armor and he learns that a farmer neighbor faithful is traveling ahead of him. Christian next traverses the valley of humiliation where he does battle with the monster Paulian. Paulian. He then passes through the terrifying valley of shadow of death. Shortly afterward he catches up with faithful the two enter the town of Vanity, home of the ancient Vanity Fair, which is a step up in short pilgrim, pilgrims route to the celestial city. Their strange clothing and lack of interest in the fairs 
merchandise causes accommodation and they are arrested. In their state, arranged before Lord, hate good. Faithful is condemned to death and executed, and he is immediately taken into the celestial city. Christian is returned to prison, but he later escapes. Christian leaves vanity accompanied by Hopeful, who was inspired by Faithful. Christian and Hopeful, hopeful cross the plane of ease and resist the temptation of a silver mine. The path later becomes more difficult and at Christian's encouragement, the two travels, travelers take an easier route through by path meadow. However, when they become lost and are caught in a storm, Christian realizes that he has led them as they are trying to turn back, they stumble onto the ground of Touting Castle where they are caught, imprisoned and beaten by the giant Tespia. A lost Christian remembers that he has a key called Promise, which he, ha he and Hopeful used to unlock the doors in the scap. They reach the delectable mountains just outside the Celestial City, but make the mistake of following Flatterer and must be rescued by a shining one. Before they can enter the celestial city, they must cross a river as a test of faith. And then, after presenting their scrolls, Christian and Ophel are admitted into city. This first part is completed. The summary of first part is completed. I hope you have got it. And now it is the second part of summary. In part 2, which was published in 1684, is Christian's wife, Christiana, and their sons, as well as their neighbor, Mercy attempt to join him in the celestial city. The psychological intensity is realized in this section, and the capacity for humor and realistic observation becomes more evident. This is the second part of Pilgrim's Progress. Christian's family and Mercy aided physically and spiritually by the great great heart who slays assorted giants and monsters along the way have a somewhat easier time because Christians has smoothed the way and even such companion as Mrs. Much Afraid and Mr. Ready to Halt managed to complete the journey. Whereas most of people encountered by Christian exemplify wrong thinking that will lead uh, damnation Christina meets people who with help become worthy of salvation when they reach the celestial city Christian's sons and the wives they married along the way stay behind in order to help future pilgrims legacy the pilgrims progress written and homely yet defined biblical prose has some of the qualities of folktale and in its former and realistic portals of minor characters, it anticipates the 18th century novel. The book was immediately popular and went through several editions within a few years of initial publication. It was translated into some 200 languages and remained a favorite for the following two centuries. And notable adapt, uh, adaptions included uh, in 1951, opera composed by Ralph Vaughan Williams. And thank you for listening and watching my video. This uh, this was the full summary of uh, Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. It is a religious allegory in which allegorically everything is defined, and their Pilgrim's Progress is defined through different char characters.